Just, just don't stop rolling, okay? All right. We're just going to roll con cons consistently. Oh, and then I need to do an intro. Don't, don't let me forget to do an intro. Intro. Don't forget to do your intro. Yeah, I won't. I won't. But as soon as Skylar's not busy, we're moving in there. We're going we're gonna to get all mountain man up in that piece. We'll come back. Uh, is it on wide right now? Yeah, it's wide open. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed cameraman. I think it's freaking heavy. Here, hang on a second. I'm going to take a photo of this thing. I'm going to post it on my Insta so that you all can see this craziness that Brian is making me lug around. You are really lucky I'm such a good friend. Aloha! Top of the morning, friends and family. We are here at the All-American Reptile and Plant Expo in Denver, Colorado. And we're gonna go around the show today and we're gonna see who has the most interesting animal on their table. Let's go. You ready, Dave? Get a, I'd like to get a snake. I'd like to get a lizard. I'd like to get an amphibian. I'd like to get an invertebrate. I'd like to get all that stuff. So let's just wander around. We'll find what we're looking for and we'll we'll do that. These guys are definitely interested. I guess if I point to something, you could show it. These guys are definitely interested in whatever's happening over here. He just made a sale. He just sold this snake right here. People are selling animals. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're we walked up and he's selling it. We were gonna wait for him to finish his sale and then we're gonna ask him what the most interesting animal is on his table. Before we do that, I would just like to remind you that for whatever reason, now it's like 60% of people that are watching these videos are not subscribed. That's If that's you, if you would hit the subscribe button, it really helps with the channel, we'd appreciate it. If you're watching it anyway, you might as well subscribe because we're gonna have a lot more videos like this and you might miss them if you're not subscribed. And if you really like the channel, like I said, it helps a lot. We need help, serious help. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly, if, I don't know if we can top that. Maybe we should just put that to the end of the video. That, I think we're gonna need to put it at the end because we're not gonna top that. Mommy. She's ready for her interview. We are here at Wizards Lizards with Hello, Alan. How you doing? All right, good to meet you. You too. Hey, um, we're going around asking people what the most interesting animal at their table is. So I'm gonna pause real quick. I want to apologize. The audio in a lot of this video was so horrible, we couldn't even include it. So I want to apologize to the vendors that I interviewed that the audio was so poor that we had to scrap it. The rest of the video, the audio is pretty good. So we're gonna keep it and at least have something going. Got to get my microphone fixed ASAP so that we're not having this issue any longer. But again, my apologies to the vendors that didn't make it into the video because the audio was cutting out so badly. But the rest of the video is pretty good. Here we go. Well, I would say it's panther chameleons at mine. Those are the animals I have. And uh, I would say my most interesting one is probably Elwood. Elwood? What is so interesting about Elwood? Well, he's a very social chameleon. He likes to be with people a little bit more than most. And uh, Elwood likes to come out quite a bit. He doesn't like to be in his habitat. Um, I could, he's right here in fact. Hi Elwood. Dude, it looked so human the way he grabbed your fingers like that to come up there. Uh, this is, yeah, Elwood is a pretty special chameleon. He likes to, uh, like I say, he likes to be out of his habitat. He kind of likes to be with people more than most chameleons do. Uh, so he's just really friendly, and we're hoping to find him a girlfriend so we can have uh, some little Elwoods running around the house. Nice. Well, hope you find Mrs. Elwood, Mr. Elwood soon. What uh, is it? This happened to be for sale? Elwood's not for sale. Um, he's going to be my next breeder. Uh, but we do have plenty of other chameleons. We have lots of boys and girls um, uh, that are for sale. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have people come down and adopt. What is the most expensive animal at your, your booth as far as chameleons? Uh, we have two males that are running at $500 a piece. Uh, the other chameleons I'm selling at $450. That's an introductory price. Uh, I think the average retail is about 600 so I'm trying to keep prices down and uh, find everybody a happy home. Sounds awesome. Not too bad. Thanks. I appreciate your time, huh? You bet. Thank you. Yeah. J -J 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 -S -A. It's Joe at JSA. I don't feel like as excited about it as I sounded. I don't really don't want to interrupt them. I don't like interrupting people when they're talking to potential customers. It just feels bad. feels bad. We'll try to wait for a natural break in the conversation. Talking to the microphone. I was a microphone. Nice, thanks. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Joe. We're here asking people today. We're, we're here with Joe at JSA, as I mentioned. We're asking people what is the most interesting animal at my table? Um, 
Can it be a dog? Guess we're doing dogs. She helps catch rodents. She really helps catch rodents. The most interesting animal at your booth today. Then I don't have to chase them. So she does all the work for me. And that's interesting. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Even if she looks as cute as she does, huh? You're welcome. All right, okay, get a close up of Moxie. All right, I gotta hold Moxie. Yeah, yeah, You're Dave. Hold Dave. Moxie. Yeah, you do it. Right. You got some Dave shots. The coolest thing about Moxie. We can't see, the coolest thing about this is we can't hear you unless you're talking to the oh, dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. The coolest thing about Moxie is this puppy loves me. Look at how much this puppy loves me. Look at how much this puppy loves me. So, I don't know if uh, you guys know this, but JSA, uh, they live about an hour north of me, and every week I go to get my rodents from JSA. And, you know, visiting with Joe and Sheena is awesome, but now that they've got this puppy, this is why I really go off and pick up my rodents. There's puppy right here. This puppy loves me. Oh my God, I love this puppy so much. Are the biggest, strongest, most whiniest I've ever had. <laughs> I'll do, here. Brian, I'll do this part of your video for you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's connected to your pelvis. All right, so what's your name? My name is Reggie. Reggie? Yeah. And we, you and I actually met in Tinley. In Tinley, yeah, about, there was like, 2018 or 2019 or something. How do you remember that? I don't remember anything past 2024. Man, I've been like, I've been like traveling the world and like going to all these expos for a good little minute. And you know, I mean, you're pretty iconic when you meet somebody, you know, like, oh, I remember I met him. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. You, you realize I'm not Brian Cusco, right? Yeah, I know. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. I just wanted to clarify this. So you got a rainbow boa and you've got a, what appears to be a pastel inchy. Fire, inchy leopard head clown. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is Starfire. Starfire? Yeah. And, and the Rainbow Bow's name? It's Striker. Striper? Striker. Striker! Yeah, I named him that because he didn't used to be so nice growing up, but you know, as me and Ace, they grow out of it. Hey, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very cool. Well, good seeing you again. Yeah, likewise. Nope, you hold the camera now because I'm sick and tired of holding that thing. Oh Where do you feel that thing? That thing weighs like 4,000 pounds, like a metric ton that thing weighs. When Brian asked me to do this video, I was like, of course I'll help you, Brian. We're buds. Then he pulls out this whole Goliath thing. Looks like it could orbit the Earth. This thing that I'm holding with one hand like this, yeah, it's, it's really, really hard. <laughs> Don't make me do this again. <laughs> All right, fine. Here's the dino. Here's the microphone. Give me the camera. You know, you know what? We're, we're at an all-American reptile and plant... Expo. Last time, I know I did. You're so good at this. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Um, so I forgot your name. I'm sorry. I'm Leah. Leah. Okay. Brian. Nice to meet you. So Nurse RX. And what is the most interesting plant at your table? Uh, oh, interesting. Well, my favorite right now is the Parezo Verde Albo. Parezo Verde Albo? Yes. Uh, yes. And so it's a variegated Parezo Verde. Um, and Parezo Verdes are already pretty, but this one is even prettier. I was like, look at that chunky variegation. Is that like piebaldism? What's happening here? Yeah, exactly. It piebald. is? That's piebaldism with plants? Yep, exactly. And then the other one that I'm loving right now is a dragon, variegated dragon, which is sort of like piebaldy, I guess, as well. It's, it's, it's actually, it's actually piebaldism, genetic piebaldism of plants? I don't know if it's like scientifically oh, okay. the same thing. But the, so plants have three layers of variegation. Uh, so well, all three layers is going to be green, and then, you know, if you're missing one layer, that's where you get that minty color, and then the all white is when you're missing the top two layers of it. Gotcha. So, I don't know if that's how pie ball works, but... Interesting. I'm going to have to find out now. Comment down below if you know that that's how it works. Um, wo do, does one of these happen to be the most expensive plant at your table? Uh, yes. This one's like a thousand. This one's like four or five. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to get some quick B-roll of these guys. and then. So uh, we learned something new about plants. They're not just to feed your iguana with. But comment below. This is serious. I mean, I'm totally doing this for Brian to get more engagement on his videos. Comment below. Comment below with the differences. Comment below and let us know what the three differences are between plant cells and animal cells are. There's three main differences. Comment below, let us know what those are. Oh, oh, Chris. Hello, extinction. Chris, at Epic Style, yes. LLC, what is your most interesting animal on your table today? Ooh, the, most in the most interesting animal on my table today? Um, I'll pick one that's for sale, because these guys are really cool, and they're on my table for the educational programs tomorrow. 
Um, but I think these three here are really cool because that's a Yate, so it gets really big. That has the same color, and that thing is super dark. Um, it, it's, it's okay if they're not for sale. Oh, not for sale. Okay, then this. Okay, we'll go, we'll go here. This thing's super dark. This Leechianus Gecko here, I would say, is my most interesting animal on the table. So what is it about this animal that makes it particularly interesting? Darth Maul GT. So GT is from Grand Terre. New Caledonia is about 15 to 16 islands. But uh, so it is a GT. Your GT animals are a 15 to 17 inch animal. Gonna get mm, upper 300s, maybe close to 400. Uh, but then it's het melanistic. So you can see that it's displaying some of that darker color already through just the, the het um, there on it. So I think that's very cool, very neat. As far as Leechianus goes, there's not a lot of uh, morphs. Uh, it's uh, polygenic stuff, kind of like this guy here. You're looking at polygenic line breeding, uh, getting really good uh, saturation colors, pinks, purples, reds, and all that stuff there that take place. Um, but your, your melanistic stuff is something that's recessive, so both mom and dad have to pass on a copy for it to be present. Um, another cool thing about it is that the melanistic lines, they communicate to each other, so you don't got to worry about like the different types of, um, oh my gosh, what's... Uh, the different types of exantic and stuff like that, how those don't communicate and mesh. Uh, the lines of melanistic mel mesh, and they can, you, can, you can run with those across the board on that. So uh, the future of Leechianus is still wide open. That's my favorite. That's it's like the, the Western front, the frontier of it. There's still so much to discover and break down on it. So yeah. Awesome, Chris. Always appreciate you, man. And obviously those animals were not for sale. No price. Yeah, no price there, but Could, they have babies. Can you have some B-roll of them real quick? Am I talking to the T-Rex? Is this a mic? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is, this is... Hi, I'm Nicole. You brought out what is the most interesting animal at your table. Absolutely. Thelma and Louise for the win. That's a great name for that snake. Thelma's on the right, Louise is on the left, and uh, they're a character. Uh, Thelma's, Thelma's good to go. Louise, she's a little touch and go. So I, I would ask you what makes most interesting animal at your table, but I feel like that's a stupid question as I look at this snake. But I'm gonna ask it anyway. What is it that makes it the most interesting animal on your table? You know, definitely the gray color. I, I think gray is just like you know super hot there. there. The the yellows maybe and the oranges. Yeah. Um, you know what? Yeah, you, there's a little bit of orange right here. That you know that that is pretty interesting. I've never really seen that specific type of orange built deep within the grayness of a scales. snake. Mm -hmm. what, what did you say? Interstitial scales. And I, I hate to make so many assumptions, but uh, is this animal for sale? She is not for sale. She is owned by a good friend of ours, and I get to borrow her, bring her around occasionally, and uh, share her story. So she'll be three years old probably um, here in October, and she was found as a baby behind a Foot Locker warehouse in Topeka, Kansas. So, so how much? <laughs> Not for sale. Uh, is that true? I mean, like, like what, what if it was like 500,000? Not for what else? sale. What else? <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's a lot. Okay, well, listen, Nicole, thank you so much for taking the time to show the most interesting on your table. You know, the, that gray is really stunning. I, it is amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for enjoying her with me. <laughs> I'm going to grab some B-roll, Dave, real quick. I just love that we really just sold that the most interesting thing about it is that it's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. Um, really appreciate that you guys love these videos because I really love making them. It's such a blast to come to the shows, walk around, talk to folks. It's like my favorite thing to do with videos these days. And you guys' favorite thing to watch, apparently, based on the view count. So this is a win-win situation. We're having a real good, loving relationship here, you and I. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure that... You comment down below with the answers that we're looking for. Dave, Dave and I figured out what the answers were together, so we're going to check the comments and make sure that you guys put that down there about the plant stuff, so plant cells versus animal cells. Other than that, uh, thank you for watching. Y'all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next video. Aloha. And uh, thanks, Dave, for lugging this thing around for me. Okay. Yes, yes, now you're, now you're yes. Thank you again, Dave, yeah, yeah, for lugging this thing around for me. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> wow, they're, they have isopods from all over the world here. He's got United, U.S. isopods, uh, French your isopods, or... Italian isopods, European isopods. Candida, that doesn't sound good. You know what? We're, we're done.